Have you ever wondered how to flip samples from your favorite TV shows into beats? If so, this is the video for you. So the track I'm gonna use for this was one of my favorite cartoons growing up. It's the theme tune from Dexter's Laboratory. Before I get into it though, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you find the content useful in this video, drop me a like as well. It all helps grow the channel. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is set my tempo to about 82 BPM. And I know the sample here should be set at 82 as well, as I did some looking online and found out the correct tempo for it is 82. I don't wanna play too much of the original track, as I don't want YouTube's police copyright infringement division to go mental at me. But let's just have a little listen so you can see what I'm working with. This section here that I think I want to flip. Even as a kid, I always thought the strings in this were fire. I actually think that I want to speed this up slightly to 84 BPM. I'm going to chop out this section here, just here. I think I'm actually just going to split it here as well. I'm just going to bring a simpler in. I'm just going to drag this into the simpler. I'm just going to select slice. You can leave it on transient and slice it that way, but I prefer to slice it on beat as we're trying to flip this sample rather than kind of remix it into a beat. I'm going to start by changing the pitch to make it indistinguishable from the original. So I'm just going to try transposing it down a few, and then I'm just going to have a play on the keyboard to see if I like the way it sounds. And maybe even slightly more. At this point, I'm just going to have a play on the keyboard and see if I can find some chops that I like. I'm just going to quantize these. I like the way that sounds at the moment, so I'm just going to double that over, but add some variation on the eighth bar. An important thing to remember when chopping samples like this is to change up the rhythm from the original. So don't just hit every note all the way along on the quarter bar in order. As you can see, it's not hitting dead on the grid. I mean, it's on the grid, but it's not dead on the quarter notes. It's just hitting the one early. I think maybe bring this one here to something different. Maybe there's something down here. I think maybe like that. Bring this one down as well. Maybe put this one here as well. Okay, so I like the way this sounds now. But what I'm noticing is as the chops are from different sections, some are louder than others. So to sort that out, I'm just going to add a small amount of compression, maybe even a little bit of kickstart too, just to bring out the transients at the start. I'm going to start with the kickstart too, actually. It's going to bring the mix down a bit there. It's going to add a little bit of EQ first, actually. Take out some of that low end. Now I can hear there's a frequency that's just standing out a little bit for me. So I'm just going to add a dynamic EQ to take that off. I'm just going to solo the band and I'm just going to play it and I'm just going to sweep around to find out where it is. I think it's just here. I'm going to set this down and solo it. Bring it a little bit further, make it a little bit wider. I'm just going to set this to dynamic. There is a crash cymbal coming through as well, but I'm not too worried about that, as that'll blend into the percussion nicely. I'm just gonna add some effects now to change it from the original. I'm gonna start with a little bit of RC20, change this to vinyl free and take the noise off. I'm just gonna pretty much leave it there. I'm just gonna bring the mix down on it a little bit. Next, I'm just gonna add a small amount of reverb, bring the decay down, take the mix down. Bring the volume down a little bit, just to make room for drums. Next, I'm just going to start by adding a snare, just to get a bit of groove in, just so I can see how it feels with some drums. Copy these over. I'm just going to bring the level on the kickstart too down a little bit, as I'm just hearing a little bit too much pumping. And that's better. So I'm just going to add a kick drum in next. Layer that with a second kick with a different tone to it now. Something with a bit more sub. Thinking something like this control kick from the OMG Ronnie pack. Uh, 
Uh, so I'm just going to layer in a hi-hat. I think I'm going to stick with the OMG Ronnie kit. One in here that I really like called Kobe. I really like this Montclair one as well. So I'm just putting a basic pattern like this. I'm just going to randomize these. Bring the velocities down a little bit. Copy them over. Then bring the velocities of those down further. I'm just going to layer that with the second hi-hat that I'm going to put a few rolls on. Layer some extra ones in like this. Just going to randomize those as well. Let's add some percussion. I'm thinking an open hi-hat, maybe even a triangle. Randomize these. Copy it over. that over. Randomize those as well. Bring the volume down slightly. Just going to bring this crash in from this boom bap hip hop kit. Bring the length of it down. Shorten it up with a bit of fade out. Got it here at the start. Another one here. Another one here I think. And hit randomize on those and copy those over as well. And then just drop the volume a bit as the drums feel a little bit static because they're all on grid at the moment. I'm just going to use the groove pull in Ableton. Maybe one of these MPC ones that I know are down here somewhere. I'm going to bring the timing down there. Gives it a little bit of groove. Gonna add some metal percussion next. This is probably my favorite and most used percussion of all time, but I haven't used it in a while. I'm just going to bring the velocity of those up and then just randomize it a little bit. I think I just want to layer the snare with the clap now as well, just to have it hit through the mix more. Just to further that cutting through the mix as well, I'm just going to add a little bit of reverb to the clap. Usually if I'm making trap beats and things, I leave the drums quite dry, but for boom bap and, and rap type beats like that, it can suit it really well. I'm just going to use the lustrous plates. I'm just going to set this to snare verb. I'm just going to bring this dry wet knob almost all the way to the bottom. Bring this pre-delay down a bit as well. Next, I'm just going to add a bass line in. I'm going to quantize these. I think I'm actually going to make it even more simple. Have these like this. So I think I'm just going to make this one a little bit more complicated. Add an extra note here. Maybe bring this one down to the A. Bring this one back up. See how that sounds. I think maybe down to the C and back up to the A. I like the way that sounds now. Next, so I'm just going to add some string hits from the BBC Symphonic Orchestra. I'm going to set it to violins one and spiccato. Pick out any low end. I think I'm actually just going to double this one up to the next octave. Hold control, click and drag it up. Next, I just think I want to add some pizzicato strings. I'm actually just going to use contact, bring in the string ensemble. I'm going to give those a quick quantize. I'm not liking these three notes, so I'm just going to bring these three down, I think, in with these ones. I'm just going to layer them with an octave above as well. Make them sound really thick. Not actually feeling the send section here, so I'm just going to change this up a bit. In fact, I might just delete these first two hits. Bring this one up. I'm just going to take out any low end on those. Add some reverb. I'm just going to add some a cable guy shape box to these, just in pan. I'm just going to set it to this basic kind of preset. I'm 
The only thing left to do now is structure it all out, add some transitions, and show you the final beat. All right, so the beat's been structured. It's actually the next day now, as Dad Duty's got in the way of me finishing this video last night. But let me walk you through a few changes. So I've started with a four bar intro, followed by an eight bar chorus. For that, just to create some variation, I've pulled out a few of the instruments in the first four bars of the chorus and added the rest in on the second eight bars. I've gone with the 16 bar verse on this one. And for the second eight bar section, I've actually just decided to use some different chops just to give it some variation so the beat feels different. We'll have a listen and see how it sounds in a second. Before we listen to it though, as always, if you've enjoyed the content or found anything useful, Hit that like button, consider hitting that subscribe button to see more videos too. Let's take a listen. So we start with the intro, this is just the sample chops, and then we bring the snare in and have a small tape stop transition. Into the chorus section. This is most of the elements, apart from the pizzicatos and some extra percussion. They come in in the second half. Adds a bit more energy in. Then we have a small break in the percussion. Keep it a bit more empty for the verse. Bring the hi-hat back in. And then just a small break again. Bring the bass back in. Also the second hi-hat. We just got a small break here with a reverse crash into the second sample chop. It sounds so grimy. It's like some bells and some, some lower brass. Bring some energy back with a hi-hat. Take that back into the chorus. The bigger tape stop transition there. Just to help us differentiate between the high strings and the other sample chops. Back into the chorus. Alright then, so if you've enjoyed it, consider hitting that subscribe button. Drop me a like, drop me a comment, let me know what you think would sound good as a good sample flip. If you want to see more content like this, maybe watch the video where I flip anime samples here. Until next time, I've been SK. Peace.